Hey guys, welcome to another Garden Photo Friday. Now today I'm trying to grab a photo of a spider that's in here and it's making it very difficult because one thing I don't want to do and one thing that you should never forget when you're taking photos out in the garden is not to disrupt any of the natural life that's going on. Um, this spider is very tightly wound in a couple of leaves and I'll show a couple pictures of the way it looks. I can't get to it. I saw him poke his head out. He looks pretty cool. But I don't want to disrupt what he has going on. Now webs and things like that are going to get messed up every once in a while moving around here in the garden and just playing around with the different stuff here. But again, one thing we want to keep in mind is to not disturb any of the natural life or any other thing that's going on. Um, this guy's very tightly wound, so we may come back to this guy, but there's a big grasshopper in the front that the kids just told me about. We're gonna go and try to take photos of that guy because I love grasshoppers, uh, especially taking photos of them because they have some unique color, unique design, and the texture is pretty awesome as well. So let's head over to the front and see if we can catch that grasshopper over there. So I have an awesome view of a grasshopper here. Uh, it's a big guy. It's probably about a good two inches in size. A uh, little bit yellowish, not as green, but I think uh, it's gonna make a wonderful photo. I've taken a picture of a grasshopper before at a garden center and actually look, it came out looking pretty good, but this one I think is gonna be great. Try, try to get a couple different angles from this guy because uh, the sun's just kind of messing with the, uh, the colors that I'm trying to get out of him. Um, but as he got into the shade, I think it caught a couple bit more. I noticed that he's missing a, a hind leg, one of the big ones. Um, so he's not jumping away from us. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's pretty steady. But, you know, catching him eat some of this grass is a pretty cool sight to see. The girls were watching as well because it, it, it's always interesting to see insects in the garden. But, uh, Let's move over to the side of the garden because I think I saw a uh, hummingbird moth somewhere over there. Let's see if we can find it. If not, uh, we'll move on to something else. All right, so we're back in the same spot with the spider. Unfortunately, he's not coming out, but as I was in this area checking to see if he was coming out, I see some, uh, some sedum that's starting to show some growth, starting to get ready to flower. The temperatures here are getting a little bit cooler at night, um, so they're, they're starting to show a lot of little uh, flowering things happening here with the sedum and we have a couple different sedums so I'm gonna take some photos of some sedum because I think that's a, a, a pretty cool view especially when you see them clustered like that um, kind of reminds me of a, of a broccoli head uh, but not really but it, it looks pretty cool and I think it'll be great to take a photo of <laughs> I spoke about earlier not interrupting any of nature's natural things that are going on I spoke about those spider webs and and of course what I did was I got the flash tangled up in the spider web uh, unfortunately he's gonna have to rebuild that but it's not as bad I'm um, show you a couple pictures of what it looks like because it, I didn't mess it up too much I just messed up whatever was attached here um, while I was taking the photos of this sedum so uh, let's get one more photo of the sedum and then we'll uh, again move on to something else <laughs> All right, so always talking about treating the garden, whether that's with uh, something to protect it from insects or diseases. We talk about doing it every two to three weeks or maybe every other week, depending on the situations. Right now, we're going into the mid months of 
summer and it's starting to cool down a little bit. Actually, we're headed towards the end of summer and it's starting to cool down quite a bit. Um, and we have our roses putting on a lot of new growth. Now, when we treat these roses, um, they tend to start pushing out new growth. And one of the things you get when you start pushing out new growth, if you don't treat everything in one week and you start getting new growth the following week, then the insects are more likely to attack that new growth that has not been treated. So I um, just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when things that are untreated do get attacked. And as you can see, all the aphids are gonna be on this uh, new growth right here. I'm gonna take some good close-up photos of it to show you exactly what it looks like because it's covered with aphids right now. But that's the difference between treating um, everything in your garden, uh, whether it's every week or every other week. Um, anything that's new is gonna definitely get attacked and that's why we do every two to three weeks. That way we get full coverage of everything that's here in the garden. pretty gross when you see them up close um, almost like little spiders but uh, it's very interesting to see aphids when you see them very very up close because they have a unique look to them almost like out of an alien movie or sci-fi movie Yeah, very interesting little insects there. Um, we'll get that sprayed. Hopefully take care of that uh, sooner rather than later uh, so they don't start eating at those roses. Again, a lot of new growth. They're starting to attack all that new stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to something else and see what else we can find here in the garden. All right, so this video is definitely turning out to be about a lot of insects. Um, I was walking by here and I saw a fly struggling to get out of this alum and I was wondering what was going on. Why was he struggling to get out? And it seems that there's a uh, spider, I call it a crab spider, I don't know the exact name, but it looks like a little crab when he sticks his hands out. Um, seems as to have gotten a hold of this fly who landed on there, because he's just been hiding there. There's a pretty pretty neat little uh, camouflage spot that he has there because um, I don't ever notice them. I do see them every once in a while, but I don't ever notice them when they're deep down inside those alums right there, and I'm pretty sure that fly just got caught up in there. So we're gonna take a couple photos of that. Uh, probably not the coolest of things, to me it is, because it's a spider catching a fly, um, but hope you enjoy that one. as soon as I got close but uh, nevertheless he looks pretty cool I wish I can get him to come out a little bit more but again don't want to disturb him because um, he does have a pretty unique shape like I said almost like a crab you can see the legs almost look like crab legs um, pretty weird looking spider but wish we can get him to come out to show you guys exactly what it looks like but he dropped that fly immediately um, I got a couple shots of that fly so you're able to see that um, but all right let's move on to something else uh, try not to keep it to insects let's see what else we can find here all right, so quickly revisiting one of the roses that we received from Prune Winners, and this one is very special, and I think it's very special to Prune Winners because it's one of their first climbers that they've had, and it's considered a mini climber, but it has a unique lilac blue color to its blooms. Now, right now, it's not showing a lot of blue. This is a very young rose that's just planted, so it's putting a lot of growth into it. It's putting a lot of its, its resistance to diseases and stuff like that. You're gonna see uh, some of it has a little bit of black spot because again, this is a very new rose. It was planted as a very small rose in a container. So it's it's been sprayed, it's been taken care of, but it's, it's putting on some good growth and we're starting to see some buds open up and they're pretty small buds, pretty small flowers, but they look absolutely beautiful. One thing I do wanna talk about is its fragrance. This is one of those roses as a mini climber that you can walk by and actually get a whiff of that fragrance and it smells absolutely wonderful. I love this rose in compared to some of our other roses. It has some very strong fragrance. So we're gonna take a picture of these clusters here and hopefully we get some more buds opening. I see a lot more opening on these stems here. 
um, and we'll get a better cluster photo. But for now, I do want to take a photo of these clusters right here to show you guys what it actually looks like because it, it's pretty unique. I love the way it looks and they're great for cutting flowers as well. right there on the camera um obviously you'll see the photos but wonderful rose can't wait for this one to grow up bigger and give us a more of a show uh like again again like i said the buds are a little bit smaller but they're starting to grow out and it's starting to have buds all along the stems here i'm gonna move on to another rose that i saw over there um because it's starting to bloom and i think it's a great yellow color for you guys to see on camera especially in a photo so let's move on to that one there Okay, so hopefully the lighting has been good here by the garage. We have this big white door and it always reflects light back. So it makes it a little bit difficult to take videos over here. But I do want to take a photo of Rose Dow because this rose is absolutely an amazing rose. Um, and I'm going to take it with the alyssum. I know I took some alyssum in the very first Garden Photo Friday video. So you're going to get some of that in this video, but you're also going to get Rose Dow because it's a beautiful, beautiful rose and it blooms like crazy. We got to go ahead and deadhead it to have these other buds start to bloom. But Rose Dow is one of those beautiful yellow looking roses. Um, get some of that peachy color sometimes but we just love the way it looks in the garden it contrasts perfectly with this uh purple alyssum um so we're gonna go ahead and take some of those photos show you guys what it looks like and then i think when i'm done i'm gonna take a photo of this right here salvia because it's looking pretty amazing i just love the texture and the color of it <laughs> Right now I see some of these uh, aphids attacking some of the expanded salvia blooms here, which is pretty wild and weird to see that because I have not typically seen that. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out this video here. I was waiting for the hummingbird moth to come back because it's always wonderful to take a picture of a hummingbird moth. I'm gonna go ahead and close it out here with a couple of photos of the salvia and this diamond frosty forbia. It's a beautiful, beautiful flower, but um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't given it a like, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.